When a nuclear fuel is sent from power stations, it's placed in a special flask for transport to Sellafield by road and rail. The flasks are very robust. They weigh about 50 tons and have walls more than 14 inches thick. 16 boats, each able to take a load of 150 tons, secure the lid. Their bodies are forged out of single ingots of steel, which are treated to 1,200 degrees centigrade and then literally squeezed into shape. They are compressed in pairs, which are then lanced apart. Checks on their mechanical properties are made and they're inspected all over ultrasonically. The flask lid is similarly made out of one forging. When finished, each flask is worth about a quarter of a million pounds. Nuclear Electric uses some 30 of them, representing a considerable investment. Lower level radioactive waste is also transported by rail. Here, a Class 31 locomotive hauls a different design of flask through Carnforth. In 1984, Operation Smash Hit was organized in order to boost public confidence in these flasks. An actual production flask was filled with water and 200 steel bars to represent uranium fuel rods. It was mounted on a British Rail flat roll wagon. To simulate a real accident, this was then derailed and turned on its side on the British Rail test track at Old Dalby in Leicestershire. British Rail's Class 46 locomotives were being withdrawn, and number 46009 was purchased along with three standard coaches to make up a typical passenger train. On the 17th of July, these were positioned at Edwalton, eight miles back from Old Dorby, and the driverless train was set in motion. Every inch of the journey was tracked by cameras, and train speed was monitored by engineers using radar guns. Eventually, it reached 100 miles per hour. Fifteen hundred invited guests watched from a safe distance as it ploughed headlong into the derailed flask and wagon. Thirty-two different cameras captured the scene from many different angles. There was even a camera on the front of the engine. As a test of the strength of the fuel flask, it could not have been more dramatic. The draw hook at the front of the locomotive hid the edge of the flask but the lid stayed bolted in position. There was some scarring of the steel and buckling of the outside cooling fins. The flask had been pressurized to 100 pounds per square inch before the test, and measurements showed that only 0.26 of a pound of pressure had been lost, proof that it would have remained intact had it carried actual radioactive materials. Now, after 40 years of carrying nuclear fuel, and over 10,000 loaded movements, the design of these flasks has been proved beyond doubt. <laughs>